Good morning, everybody. This is a very brief lecture on capsules of thyroid gland and prostate. The learning objectives for my today's lecture are in this lecture, I am going to describe capsules of thyroid gland, capsules of prostate, how to deal with these capsules during thyroid surgery will be also discussed in this lecture. There are few MCQs at the end of this session for revision and assessment. Let's first go to the capsule of thyroid gland. Thyroid is enclosed in two capsules. One of them is called true capsule. It's also called the inner capsule. It surrounds the gland. It is derived from condensation of the connective tissue. The second capsule is called false capsule or outer capsule of the thyroid gland. This capsule is derived from pretrichal layer of deep cervical fascia. The venous plexus of the thyroid gland lies deep to true capsule. As shown in this slide, thyroid gland is surrounded by true capsule or the inner capsule. Outer to this is pollus capsule of the gland, which as already said is derived from pretrichal layer of deep cervical fascia. The thyroid venous plexus lies deep to true capsule of the gland. During thyroid endectomy, which is the surgical removal of the gland, the surgeon is removed thyroid gland, true capsule and subcapsular venous plexus. After thyroidectomy, only follis capsule is left behind. Like thyroid, prostate is also enclosed in two capsules. True capsule, also called the inner capsule of the prostate. It is derived from condensation of the connective tissue. Follis capsule is also called the outer capsule. It is derived from pelvic fascia. In contrast to thyroid gland, here prostatic venous plexus lies between the two capsules. During surgical removal of an adenoma, an incision is given and the adenoma is shelled out, leaving behind true capsule, follis capsule and the venous plexus between them. To make things more clear, let us go to this animation. Like thyroid gland, prostate is also surrounded by two capsules. True capsule, which is the inner capsule, surrounds the prostate. It is derived from connective tissue condensation. Follis capsule is the outer capsule of gland derived from pelvic fascia demarcated by this red dotted circle. Between the true and false capsule lies the prostatic venous plexus. During surgery, an incision is given and adenoma is shelled out, leaving behind true capsule, false capsule and the venous plexus between the two. Thus, both capsules plus venous plexus are left behind. I want to summarize this lecture as under. In thyroid gland, venous plexus lies deep to the true capsule. Whereas in case of prostate, venous plexus lies between true and false capsules. During thyroidectomy, gland is removed along with true capsule, leaving behind only false capsule. Whereas in case of prostate, adenoma is shelled out, leaving behind both capsules and prostatic venous plexus between them. This procedure reduces post-operative bleeding from both glands. Now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture. Which of the following statements is true about thyroid capsule? A. True capsule is derived from pretracheal fascia. B. False capsule is inner capsule of the thyroid gland. C. Thyroid venous plexus lies between true and false capsule. D. During thyroid ectomy, venous plexus is removed along with true capsule. D is the correct option. Which of the following statements is true about thyroid capsule? True capsule is derived from pretracheal fascia. B. False capsule is inner capsule of the gland. C. Thyroid venous plexus lies deep to true capsule. D. During thyroidectomy, venous plexus is not removed along with true capsule. C is the correct option. Which of the following statement is true about capsules of prostate? True capsule is derived from pelvic fascia. Pollus capsule is inner capsule of the gland. Prostatic venous plexus lies deep to true capsule. D. Prostatic venous plexus lies between true and false capsule. D is correct option. Which of the following statements is false about removal of prostatic adenoma? A. True capsule is removed. B. Both true and false capsules are removed. C. Prostatic venous plexus is removed. D. Prostatic venous plexus along with true and false capsules are kept intact. D is correct option. Which of the following steps if taken can reduce post-operative blood loss during thyroidectomy? A. Remote true capsule. B. Both true and false capsules are removed. C. True capsule is removed along with thyroid venous plexus. D. Both capsules along with thyroid venous plexus is removed. C is the correct option. True capsule is removed along with thyroid venous plexus. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching.